You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors and narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. Twice Upon a Train, written by K. A. Mall, narrated by Emily Beresford. Chapter One. Keegan caught sight of movement in her peripheral vision. Premeds, stepping closer to anesthesia, lifting onto their toes, peering wide-eyed over the drapes. Thank God NYC General's policy prevented them from scrubbing in. All right, that's it, she barked. All of you, move right now. Move to that perfect position, the one you've obviously been searching for, and stay there until I say you can move again. This patient deserves better than to have her surgeon distracted by the constant shuffle of your feet. It was a routine gallbladder operation, one that she should have been able to do in her sleep. But she'd lost her edge, lost what top surgeons took for granted, the ability to remain cool under pressure. Distractions, an unexpected movement, a loud noise, a negative thought. In recent days, maybe weeks, they'd gotten the best of her. If my hand slips, she continued, even by one millimeter, I'll pierce this patient's bile duct. Is that what you want? No. No, Dr. Wade. No, doctor. Smooth move, Sherlock. Let everyone know you're worried about making a beginner's error. That's the way to build confidence. She returned her attention to the hot gallbladder, thinking about the stress of her new position, chief of trauma surgery. From there, her mind wandered back to her students. You were just like them, you know, eager to learn, determined to change the world, to make a difference. Like them, you wanted to help the less fortunate, to be better than the doctors who served as your teachers, to repair a broken system. She removed her skullcap, making her way to the family waiting room, trying to remember the precise moment when she'd lost her passion for medicine. The surgery went well, she said, sitting next to the husband. She'll be in recovery for a couple of hours. She answered his questions, providing an appropriate amount of detail. As she stepped off, wanting nothing more than to slip back to her office unnoticed, an attractive brunette joined her. Are you okay? Naomi asked. Because you seemed stressed in the OR, short with the students, not yourself. This familiarity, this crossing of boundaries, it was why doctors should never sleep with their nurses, not even once. I've been working around the clock for days, Keegan responded, I'm exhausted and dehydrated. Other than that, I'm good as gold. If only that were all it was. We're through the worst of it, Naomi said, referring to the interstate pileup that had filled the ER with mangled limbs and head traumas. You should take some time off. You never take time off. She brushed Keegan's hand with her fingertips. Come on, it'll be good for you. It had been a year since that night, the one where their ethical boundaries had blurred. And still, there were times she acted as if they were lovers. Maybe so, Keegan answered. I'll think about it. It had been five years since her last vacation. Maybe a trip would be helpful. God knows she needed to do something. So do it then, Naomi persisted, playfully bumping into her. What's stopping you? Surely it can't be the money. I mean, with all the surgeries you do, you must be rolling in dough. In the grand scheme of things, what's a week or two off? I said I'd think about it, Keegan responded, entering the ICU. Twelve hours and three grueling surgeries later, she stepped outside, fatigued to the bone. Looks good, doesn't it? A colleague greeted, crossing paths with her on the sidewalk that ran in front of the hospital. Keegan wrinkled her brow, looking up. The new facade, it looks good. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does, Keegan answered, surveying the updates to the main building. Nothing screams cutting-edge medicine like shiny glass, lush landscaping, and bluestone tiles. Walking toward the parking garage, she experienced irrational jealousy of the building and of the young doctor who'd just gone inside. At 40, she felt old. (sighs) Maybe Naomi was right. Maybe she did need some time off. Driving home, she considered how she might carve out two weeks without causing hardship. If she rescheduled her elective surgeries, it was doable. But if she did go somewhere, 
Where would she go? She parked in the lower deck, crossed the checkerboard floor, and rode the elevator to her building's rooftop lounge. Dr. Wade, the bartender greeted. Didn't figure you were going to make it in tonight. He lifted his cloth from the bar, smiling broadly. The usual? Yes, Keegan answered. But make it a double. She slid onto a high-backed stool near the window, tall for some patrons, but not for her, peering down at the streets of Manhattan. To her left were designer shops. To her right were brownstones and high-rises. It had been a decade since she'd moved here, and still the place didn't feel like home. She doubted that it ever would. Home. Where was home? Was it Alabama, her birthplace, a place connected to the ebb and flow of the tides? No, not since she'd come to terms with who she was. Was it California, the place she'd attended medical school, a place of foods and traditions from all over the world? No, not anymore. Home. Where was home? She felt disconnected, alone in a hectic world. Here you go the bartender said, setting a glass of Pendleton whiskey in front of her. Thanks, Kagan responded, answering the first of three calls from the hospital. All post-op complications, an infection, a case of anesthesia-induced delirium, and vomiting. Hold on, I need to relocate, she said, picking up her glass and moving toward the elevator. She pressed the button, got off on the 16th floor, and traversed the carpeted hallway. Her condo was next to the one occupied by Mrs. Schmidt and her nippy chihuahua. She had three bedrooms, 11-foot ceilings, crown moldings, and a decorative fireplace. In her kitchen were a butler's pantry and a full-size dining table. With a bag of pita chips in hand, she set her drink on a coaster and settled onto the sofa. Go ahead, I'm listening, she said, prompting the second of three nurses to continue. An hour later, she stepped in for a hot shower, an activity that at one time had relaxed her mind and muscles. She stepped out, fingering through her dampened hair, clipped, brown, and silvering at the temples, wondering if this was all there was. She dressed in tailored silk pajamas, propped onto an extra pillow, and read an article about the aorta in her preferred medical journal. When she slept, she slept soundly for all of two hours, Tossing and turning, she kicked off the covers. This must stop. If it doesn't, you can't continue to operate. She knew the statistics. If she didn't do something to resolve her insomnia and the anxiety that accompanied it, it wouldn't be long before she'd make a critical error in surgery. If she didn't do something, she'd wake up one morning after two lousy hours of sleep and find herself embroiled in a malpractice lawsuit. If she didn't do something, before long, she'd kill someone. It could happen. She'd watched the scenario play out, destroying a good friend and colleague. But she was at a loss. She'd tried everything she could think of. She'd self-prescribed medications for sleep and anxiety. She'd taken one hot shower after another. She'd relied, sometimes too heavily, on the bottle. She'd tried everything, everything except the one thing that she needed to try, seeking professional help. And that wasn't and never would be an option. Not if she wanted to practice medicine at the level she practiced medicine. She reached for her nightstand, twisting the cap off of a fresh bottle of Pendleton. Tomorrow, or rather later today, she'd find time to visit a travel agency. A vacation she thought, swallowing her first glass in one gulp. That's what you need. You need a nice, long vacation. Twice Upon a Train, written by K.A. Mall, narrated by Emily Beresford. You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.